My friends, every single day someone comes to me and tells me that they have been unsubscribed from my channel without their knowledge. Please make certain that you are still subscribed and if you have not subscribed, please do so. In our ongoing fight to stop corporations from destroying our myths, we need your help. Thank you. My friends, Kathleen Kennedy is at it again. The woman who killed Star Wars, dumped its body down the Sarlacc pit, and then tried to retcon the Sarlacc pit out of existence by dredging Boba Fett back up again in Mandalorian Season 2, talk about a perfect crime, is now trying to make sure that Lucasfilm gets bumped off as well. I don't know if this is a last hurrah as she heads out the door, or if this is an ominous sign that once again the balance of power is shifting behind the scenes at Lucasfilm. But somehow, Kathleen Kennedy has managed to find a young adult fantasy book that manages to not only be woke, but actually express oh-so-trendy anti-police sentiments in the process. In a rant in the epilogue of this book, the author goes on a diatribe against police and confesses that the book is a politically motivated work depicting police as murderers. That's the project that Kathleen Kennedy has brought to Lucasfilm, just what Lucasfilm needs right now. Wouldn't you agree? No? Well then, apparently Lucasfilm isn't the place for you. This story comes to us by way of the inestimable Ichibaka, whose amazing blog DisneyStarWarsIsDumb.wordpress.com is required reading for all pop culture warriors, although it began with this announcement in Deadline. Disney is giving a full embrace to Children of Blood and Bone, the action fantasy film based on the best-selling novel by Nigerian-American author Tomi Adiemi that originated as a Fox 2000 property. Sources said that the project caught the fancy of Lucasfilm and that its chief, Kathy Kennedy, is in the process of making this the first feature property to be produced by Lucasfilm since the Disney acquisition that isn't Star Wars or Indiana Jones. The first feature property produced by Lucasfilm since Disney acquired it. Lovely. That it caught the fancy of Kathleen Kennedy should tell you all you need to know about this proposed film. But just in case you're wondering what it's about, here's the description. Zeli Adibola remembers when the soil of Orisha hummed with magic. Burners ignited flames, titers beckoned waves, and Zeli's reaper mother summoned forth souls. But everything changed, the night magic disappeared. Under the orders of a ruthless king, well, what else would it be, magi were killed, leaving Zeli without a mother and her people without hope. Now Zeli has one chance to bring back magic and strike against the monarchy, aka the patriarchy. With the help of a rogue princess, of course, that's the only one that could help Zeli, another woman, Zeli must outwit and outrun the crown prince, who is hell-bent on eradicating magic for good. Well, of course, he's a crown prince and part of the toxic patriarchy. Danger lurks in Orisha, where snow leponaires prowl and vengeful spirits wait in the waters. Yet the greatest danger may be Zeli herself as she struggles to control her powers and her growing feelings for an enemy. Okie dokie. Well, let's go down the woke checklist and see if any snowflakes melt, shall we? Oppressed characters of color? Check. Female lead? Check. Noble matriarchy versus evil patriarchy? Check. One can almost imagine Kathleen Kennedy slavering at the chance to strike another blow against Lucasfilm, an institution she has apparently actively sought to undermine and reshape since she took the reins because of its problematic origins as something George Lucas created back in his, you know, white male days. In a sense, Kathleen Kennedy sees herself as Zeli in this story, and George Lucas is the ruthless king who excluded the virtue signaling magic from Lucasfilm, a magic she now seeks to insert so that wokeness can finally reign supreme and Oompa Loompas in drag can gather skittles from rainbows farted by unicorns of color. Or whatever passes for a woke paradise these days, I really don't know. I'm just guessing. All I want is a good story, folks. 
but it's looking like this particular story is primarily an agenda delivery system. And now we get to the really woke part. Tomi Adiemi regularly expresses hostility towards police officers in her Twitter feed. I do not pass judgment on her for that. Certainly, as a black woman, her experience is different than mine, and I respect her perspective and her right to express herself freely on her own Twitter feed. I also support her right to express herself in her fiction, because that's what artists do. They take their real-life concerns, hopes, fears, perspectives, and infuse them into their work. Be it paintings or novels or poems, cartoons, that's what it is to be an artist. The problem lies squarely with Hollywood at this point, as thanks to their virtue signaling and blatant woke agenda, it becomes increasingly difficult to find movies that are not woke. Certainly, there is room in Hollywood for political movies, movies with agendas, art house films, documentaries. These kinds of films are right for personal expression, and if you don't like them, you don't have to go. But now things have gotten so bad in Hollywood that even companies like Lucasfilm, Disney, Marvel, mainstream companies, every television show, every movie, even children's programming at this point is crammed full of woke content and agenda politics. This is a young adult novel with an epilogue containing a diatribe against police, for God's sakes. It's so bad. It has spilled over into our traditional stories and modern myths to the extent that Star Wars is corrupted, Star Trek is corrupted, Doctor Who is corrupted, all the things we love are infected with this woke propaganda like a plague. The reason is, Star Wars, Star Trek, Doctor Who, all the things we love are all rooted in the past. A past that these people seek to obliterate because they find so much of it problematic. Anything depicting white males as heroes? Problematic. We have to recast them as women or degrade them and vilify them to knock them off their pedestals or just remove them entirely from the conversation. This is the atmosphere we're dealing with these days. And now Kathleen Kennedy is looking to pour more gasoline on this Hollywood bonfire with yet another bit of trendy propaganda. All these Hollywood types are so concerned about the rights of people being violated. What about our rights to not have the stories that we have loved all of our lives subjugated, bent, spindled, folded, and mutilated into something we don't recognize anymore, all to further political agendas? Do we not have any rights to love our stories? Things that have meant so much to us as people what about our rights to them? To not having the things we love mutilated beyond recognition. I don't think that's so much to ask, is it? That we have some semblance of our culture that remains? Something untouched by your virtue signaling and your agendas? I guess only the right people have rights. You could do all the virtue signaling and propaganda that you want in your other films, but leave something behind for us. Don't destroy all the things that we have loved to further the narrative that you want to impose on us and the rest of the country. The rest of the world. That's why we're upset. Here's what a couple of reviews from Amazon have to say about the book Kennedy is turning into a Lucasfilm project just so you have a taste of what's coming. One star, mediocre writing, mostly just a political anti-police officer statement. The writing was okay, mediocre I guess. What really ruined it for me totally though was the diatribe at the end about how cops are killers and how there are murders all the time. Sounds like the story is dedicated to those who are suppressed because of police officers, which is laughable after reading the story, which is all about how those who have superpowers are murdered by those who are in power and are in danger of being completely wiped out as a people. The author doesn't know the statistics, I guess, about cops who are murdered all the time trying to keep our communities safe. Don't buy this book 
and support this uninformed author and her hatred for police officers so many better books out there. Another review says violent story not for young or sensitive readers. Much more violent and angry a story than I thought it would be. I almost stopped listening several times and took a break from it. I did eventually finish listening, only to be frustrated with the ending that didn't make much sense. I assume there will be a sequel which will clarify the cliffhanger ending. I won't purchase it. Then, to make matters worse, in the epilogue the author describes that this is actually a politically motivated story about the killing of black people by police. Yes, it was obviously a story about a persecuted race, but still. If you like Game of Thrones and all the incest and killing, you will love this story even though it's not as complex. I was hoping it was going to be more fun fantasy and magic. Yes, that is something we have all been hoping. For a little bit more fun, a little bit more fantasy, and a little bit more magic. All without the horrors and sadness of the real world intruding. But it's not to be, is it folks? The relentless march towards a Hollywood woke singularity presses on thanks to Kathleen Kennedy. Yes, that vanishing point where everything coming out of Hollywood contains political messaging designed to shame audiences into silence and empower those who find not only our modern myths, but Western civilization problematic. Me, all I want is some good Star Wars, some Kurtzman free Star Trek, and a version of Doctor Who that doesn't make me want to throw up. But apparently, Lucasfilm and Hollywood have other plans. From the center of the earth, this is Dictor Van Doomcock bidding you all, my friends, stay angry and subscribe to DisneyStarWarsIsDumb.wordpress.com and hail to Ichibaka. Ha, 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 ha,